Hello, friends and countrymen, and welcome to the temporary set of Judge Janie, where I judge things and then I talk about things that I like. One of the things I noticed that's kind of missing from the commentary community is a kind of balance between crippling despair and the realization that if you get off the computer, people aren't as scary as the internet will make them seem. I guess now would be the time to sort of introduce myself properly because I'm Janie Bell, I'm a writer and a playwright, and I got my BFA in 2016 for fiction writing, and yeah, I'm a twice award-winning short story author. Not to, not to pat myself on the back here, <laughs> but I'm really proud of what I've accomplished. Uh, of course, I'm not talking about YouTube because I have accomplished nothing. Except stroking my own ego. Oh. I love storytelling. It's my passion, and that's why today's subject is Netflix. Going to school for writing is kind of like seeing how the sausage gets made. Once you've spent so many years just studying how stories are crafted and structured, you understand when somebody's doing it okay, when somebody's doing it badly, and when somebody's doing it to like a genius level. There's a lot of adequate but not impressive in Hollywood right now and it's so depressing because there are so many artists out there who actually have original stories with their own worlds that don't need to rely on the weird Peter Pan syndrome fucking nostalgia fetish that's been going around. I, I don't know what's up with this, okay? And you know, I hear all these younger dudes like, oh, okay, boomer, like just hating on older people for no reason. Yeah, you still read their comics, so you can fucking chill. I just, <sighs> okay, now I'm getting worked up. This is hard. I'm sick of companies like Disney, especially, who just use the fact that something is familiar even if it's just a name, like you only vaguely know the story or it's just like a book that's been written and you're like, oh, that's a title of a book I've never read. Now there's a movie about it. Okay, I'm gonna go see it based on that. Nah, I, I just, I can't get over the, the lack of care, the lack of any sort of, I don't know, desire to create something greater than what's come before. The, the people who have the money aren't the creative ones. And that's kind of a problem, because those people just care about making money. And guess what? Just because it's high budget doesn't mean it's high art. But you know, Disney's like the McDonald's of the entertainment industry. It's comforting and it's familiar and you can just eat it up, right? But if you just eat shit, how the fuck are you supposed to be able to know when something is truly extraordinary? You know, if Disney is the McDonald's of the entertainment industry, then Netflix is the Waffle House at 3 a.m. It's really hit or miss, and just, they don't seem to be able to fucking advertise for the life of them. I've been posting TikToks about the fucking stupid ass fucking Netflix billboards. Follow me at uh, Janie the Bell. Ring-a-ding. Holy shit, they have no billboard game. I swear to God, the stupid shit that I've had to walk by going to work. I now walk to work and I have a new job that's full time, which is awesome. Holy financial stability, Batman. I can't believe I did it. Yes. So I want to start doing this a little bit more because it, you know, kind of gives me life. To be honest, I don't think I'm any good at it, but hey, maybe if I just talk shit to the camera, I'll get views. Who knows? Anyway, Netflix. The problem with Netflix is that once they figure out that like something is popular, they're just like, okay, so let's take this and let's copy it 10 times and shove it at our viewers and see which one bites. <laughs> oh, it just makes me so angry because I know they can do better. There's been some really good shit on Netflix. But the thing is they don't know when they have something that's really, really good because it doesn't necessarily reflect in like the stats, which is why you have to look at like reviews and such, but not even just reviews because a lot, so many of them are bought and paid for. One of the things that frustrates me about Netflix is just how badly they market their shit too. Even if they have something good, they're not good at marketing it. I had to walk by the stupid fucking Pinocchio billboard that said, oh my God, what was it? Life is the journey, love is the reward. Who writes the shit? You can do better. You can do better. Please be better. <laughs> For the love of God, there's too much money there to be putting out that kind of bullshit. I'm probably gonna delete my Netflix subscription at some point. 
you know, unless they give me a job or something. I, I swear to God, somebody hire me. I love my job right now, but it is has nothing to do with, I mean, I'm a receptionist. It has nothing to do with writing or anything that I actually want to do. Holy shit, I've been in charge of creatives before. Hire me. That's a pretty bold statement. Anyway, they can do better. It's really frustrating as someone who's dedicated their life to storytelling. See so many great storytellers being forced to live within the same worlds that have been around for years and years and years. Like, come on, let them be creative. Let them have something original. Wouldn't you rather, like, kick off the next Star Wars? Not in that same world, not using that same universe, but starting something new? Something that might carry on even longer? I mean, yeah, it's risky. When there's so much crap around, people get tired of it after a while and they seek out something new. And there are people that want to create it and want to give it to the world. I am one of them. But it kills me every time I see something like a novel that I loved be adapted into a piece of shit that has nothing to do with what the original story is about. <coughs> Haunting of Hill House. <coughs> Yeah, pissed about that one. Shirley Jackson is one of my favorite authors. She is a huge influence on me because I write horror uh, and science fiction and fantasy when it comes to short stories. And I'm a comedic playwright and I guess, uh, I guess screenplay writer. I mean, I haven't actually like screen, like formatted it into screenplay, but I do actually tend to have notes for my videos. <laughs> I'm just talking shit here because I'm a nobody, but at least I make the stuff that I actually care about i might not really make money but i'm doing what i love and i'm not letting it be poisoned by greed because greed is so destructive it can suck the life out of something that once gave you joy because then you have to do it and not in like a i have to be a writer sort of way then it becomes something that you can end up resenting. You see it happen to YouTubers. You see it happen to writers and actors and all sorts of artists. They also get fucking worked to death. This industry is not very good to its artists. But now I want to talk about something that is on Netflix that I really love. If you're a fan of horror manga and know the name Junji Ito, this is the show for you. It's Thai. And think like the devil meets Sailor Moon in one-shot stories where she goes to different schools and exposes the evil that's already there. It doesn't matter that it's in Thai. It is still the best written thing that I have seen since Mad Men. That's how serious I am about this. The level of talent displayed by each and every one of the actors is insane. The main actress kind of modeled her character off of a Junji Ito character named Tomi. And if you watch it and have read that manga, then you kind of, yeah, you'll pick that up quick. It is such a joy for me to watch because the writers make choices that I'm either not expecting, which is really hard to do, or I'm like, yes, yes, they went that route. Fuck yes. Oh, it's so satisfying as a writer to see somebody go down as like, I mean, I'll, I'll know what's going to happen, but to see them go down that route and do it really well is so fucking impressive. And just every detail of that show is polished. The framing will remind you, if you read manga, you will see that framing and be like, this kind of looks like a still, if we put it in black and white and fucking in pencil, it would look like it's straight out of a manga. <laughs> Fuck, the soundtrack is good, the fucking lighting is good, the set designs, the fucking, oh, the sound effects, dude. And the season one finale, oh, mmm, it like, oh, it hits that perfect mark of like, so over the top that it becomes like black humor and there is that level of uh of black humor to it because there's uh so much justice that takes place and not always justice there's endings that don't satisfy you the same way that others do but that's a good thing you want that variety in storytelling especially like it's like a short story anthology it's so impressive i wasn't disappointed by any of those episodes what I was disappointed by was seeing Netflix pick it up for season two and forget about it. Yeah, not okay. Because that's some genius. And I will put my degree behind that. I will put the 15 years of writing that I've done behind that. It can be really terrifying and uncomfortable at times. 
especially the first episode. There's some stuff that maybe not would wouldn't fly with every but there's a lot of stuff that would probably make people way too uncomfortable to watch personally i like that but i also have a higher tolerance for disgust and horror that's kind of what i do really it's it's worth a watch and it's worth a renewal at the very least enjoy what's there because who knows maybe somebody will see this and go hey maybe we should renew that tie show that like tackles really important social issues and does a really good job of integrating stuff like social media and such into its storylines without feeling forced and just feels really culturally and politically relevant. Maybe we should bring that back, yo! <laughs> Netflix producers, <laughs> we're not doing that. Watch Girl From Nowhere. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on TikTok. Links are below. We'll see how much more of this I can take. That's the end of the video. I'm done now. Oh fuck, am I selling out? Somebody put me in charge! <laughs>